so i think we can start this session now good evening to all chaitali here your host for today's session building ui layer with micro fronted pattern so we will start with the introduction of the session before that let's have a small introduction of our today's event sponsor synergetics synergetics is india's most distinguished learning company in it technology we are ready with our top class learning solution that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across the every in industry around the globe our expansive greenfield solution includes onboarding solution reskilling solution certification certification plus add on cloud adoption architecting practice playbook latest technology emerging technology training content development and more in today's it technology is staging at the bat of an eyelid staying at the par of it with the evolving technologies we have a team of well qualified experienced industry certified professional who are more than willing to share their learnings and take up learning challenges for more information we are available at info@synergetics-india.com today's session is organized by etc community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft our etc community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology you just need to follow our meetup group which is emerging technology community just install the app on your phone and follow our community so you will get update about our events meetup webinars and workshop now code of conduct which you all need to follow please note that no one is allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording for recording simply subscribe to our youtube channel the link will be provided in the chat box later next slide please agenda for the session as you can see on the screen for in depth information we are available at info@synergetic-india.com you can check out the information regarding this topic or you can ask us at info@synergetic-india.com speaker for today's session mr sonu satyadas sonu sir is a microsoft certified trainer on azure cloud services he has 12 plus years of experience in training and development in various microsoft and open source technologies he has delivered certification training on azure administrator azure developer azure architect and ai engineer he has acquired valuable experience in open source technologies such as dotnet core html5 azure and office 365 next slide our upcoming cert ready webinar which is on 30th of august on az104 registration link will be provided to you on the in the chat box so you can register through that for uh, follow our social media platforms to get uh, update related upcoming sessions and webinars now i like to hand over the mic to sonu sir so he can take her at the session thank you thanks to all thank you chaitarli okay i think uh, we will start the session i hope the screen is visible to all of you <clears throat> okay so a small introduction about uh, myself so this is sonu satyadas i'm working as a practice head for open source and dot net technologies so i am a microsoft certified trainer on the azure cloud i mostly handle all the open source technology uh, learning and training uh, inquiries and uh, the 
batches. So I also deliver sessions for Microsoft on certifications uh, for a, uh, Azure developer, Azure architect, Azure infrastructure associate, AI engineer and more. So today's session is on micro front end. So the agenda for today's session is building a, a front end applications. Microservices approach for backend. Evolution of front end development technologies. Then micro front ends, how and why we have to use them. How we can implement the micro front ends in our applications. And finally, we will discuss uh, some micro front end frameworks that is currently available in the market. Let's start. So today's world, we are building applications using different technologies. So mostly we create the backend services using some of the server side technologies. It could be .NET or Java or uh, PHP or Python or any any uh, server side scripting technologies. But we can also build the front end using some kind of JavaScript frameworks such as uh, Angular, React, Vue.js, Ember.js, or Solid.js, Knockout.js. Like that, we have hundreds of frameworks available uh, in JavaScript for building the UI elements. But it is also possible to build the front end applications using the uh, .NET Blazor applications, Razor Pages applications, or you can use the Node.js framework that is Express.js, or you can also use the Python based uh, technologies such as Django or Flask, or we can also consume the APIs from the mobile applications, which is built using the Swift or React Native or some other uh, mobile application framework. So if you see, we have hundreds of frameworks available for building the front end applications. That is the UI for our uh, applications. And we usually build the backend technologies as services or APIs. But if you see, that was not the trend uh, some years. Uh, before. So we were building applications as uh, monolithic applications. And later we have we came into service oriented uh, uh, architecture. And now we are building the applications as microservices. So if you see most of the organizations are currently migrating their existing products into microservices pattern. So microservices is a design pattern or architectural pattern that we can use to build our backend services. Usually in a monolithic application, a monolithic application means if we are building our uh, all modules of an application, the front end, the database layer, everything into a single project, we can say it is a monolithic application. In a monolithic application, it is very difficult for us to make changes, uh, deploy them very quickly, uh, scale them uh, rapidly, and uh, making the changes into a particular module or a component is very difficult. But by implementing this microservices pattern, we are splitting the entire backend application logic into small individual services which can be deployed independently, which can be tested independently. 
and which can be scaled independently. So if I, for example, if I have to build an e-commerce application, that means a shopping cart application, we need to identify what are the different modules which is part of that application. So if you consider an application like a Flipkart or Amazon, you can see there are different uh, application modules involved in inside this. We have a payment service, which is taking care of all the uh, payment related functionalities. We have a product module, which is taking care of all the product related functionalities. We have the cart module, which is taking care of all cart related functionalities. We have an order module, which is taking care of all the order related functionalities. So considering a product service, a product service can be deployed as a microservice, which can be developed independently as a separate project. We can make the product service. All the modern frameworks, whether it is uh, .NET or uh, Java Spring Boot, or it can be uh, Python Plus, or any, or maybe the Node.js, uh, Ex ExpressJS. In Node.js, we have the ExpressJS framework. All these are uh, allowing the user to create such kind of uh, APIs, and we can deploy them as uh, API services, mostly in the form of RESTful services which can be consumed from any type of client. So the applications modules such as product module, cart module, order module, identity module, payment module, all these can be developed independently and deploy into different different uh, servers. Suppose if I want to deploy my product service into a virtual machine, I can do that. The order service can be deployed into uh, an on-premise server. The payment service can be deployed into an AWS cloud. The cart module can be deployed into an Azure cloud. So as a developer, it's your choice where to go and deploy your application. So you can build your applications as independent services and then deploy them into different environments you can build those apis using different uh, technologies maybe i can create the product service using c sharp means using the dotnet framework the payment module i can create using uh, java the order module i can develop using python Identity module I can create using PHP. That means my entire backend, the entire backend services, I can create as independently deployable unit of application, which we call as microservices. And they can communicate each other using some well defined endpoints or they can use some kind of communication patterns. It could be message driven communication pattern or event driven communication pattern or HTTP based communication pattern. Even though we are deploying all these backend services, backend microservices in different, different servers, different, different uh, environments, we could consume them from a single UI application. That means even though we are deploying them as different applications, independent applications in different environments, different servers, they act as a single application because it works together to provide the functionality for the application or the customer consumes these services uh, as a single application. So what is the benefit of using microservices? Because nowadays all the organizations, all the modern applications we are building using microservices. 
agility is one feature of microservice because it's very small independent teams can take the ownership of that those services and that team needs to focus only on that particular functionality because it's a very short small functionality they can build the application very quickly they can add features to the application very quickly so they can release the applications in uh, very quickly maybe in every sprint they can deploy a new version of the application suppose if the customer needs some changes in the backend technology or in that particular service so considering a payment service so currently the team needs to work on the payment service which provides only the credit card and debit card payment functionalities so going forward based on the customer experience or based on the customer feedback we can include the upi payment functionality or we can add the cash on delivery functionality that means without affecting the other modules of the application like product module or order module or maybe the cart module or the identity module without affecting the other modules we can easily add more features to the existing application and we can release those new versions of the application so every service keeps separate versioning method like product service maybe it is released uh, as maybe currently it is 1.5 version uh, used but the payment service because it's very a small and quick, uh, short service that we release very frequently it may be version 5.0 so the payment service is version 5.0 but the product service may be version 1.5 the order service can be version 3.0 so that means every product uh, manages its own versioning it's very easy to make changes in a particular module if i want to add features to the product module i can do that if i want to add features to the order module i can do that so that is what the agility flexible scaling is another feature in which it allows each of the service to be uh, scaled independently that means if the customers are more frequently accessing a particular functionality for example in uh, e-commerce applications like a uh, flipkart or amazon we can see the big billion day sale when it happens customers are more interested to check the price of the products to see whether the products is product price is reduced or not so rather than going to uh, going to the login and then placing the order or doing the payment they first go and check the price is reduced or not so for that they consume the product service more because the products details comes from the product service so they the customers are mostly using the product service functionality so i want to scale the product service but i don't want to scale my payment service or order service because only the product service is consumed more so i want to scale only that part of the application i want to uh uh deploy multiple instances of, of that particular service i can do that because my product service is deployed as an independent service that is flexible scaling easy deployment this enables the team to deploy the applications using the ci cd tools and make it easy to deploy the applications very frequently because the functionality of this application or the functionality of that particular service is very small or limited so they can uh, make changes uh, very quickly and release a new version in every sprint sorry 
technological freedom as i have mentioned that every microservice is developed as an independent service which can be consumed from a front end application since they are uh, independent products or independent projects we can choose any technology stack for building those services maybe i can use the dotnet for building the product service java for building the payment gateway or payment service i can use the node js for building the order service python for building the, the cart service so that is possible so developers or teams can choose the appropriate uh, framework or tool for building that particular service reusable code you are dividing your application into small chunks or small independently deployable services you can reuse the features and functionalities in multiple projects so for example if i have a payment gateway designed so the payment gateway service i can create as a generic service which i can use in my e-commerce application the same payment service i can use for my ticket booking app application the same payment service i can use for my uh, maybe uh, logistic application so i can use it anywhere resilience service independence increases the application's resistance to failure because each one of the service is deployed as independent service if one of the particular service fails it does not affect the entire application because if one service is failed only that feature will not work the other features or other services still works for the customer so when you build a microservice application we have to cons consider Uh, or we have to follow some principle like we have to build lightweight protocol between services for communication we can use different uh, communication patterns or uh, protocols for communication maybe a messaging queue service amqp or http based communication or it can be some event driven architecture i can follow for communication and the services should be very small and it need to perform only one job per service means payment service is only taking care of the payment order service is only taking care of the order processing product service is only doing the product related functionalities service independent that means every service every project needs to be created as an independent project and it needs to be deployed independent and it need to be consumed independently without any dependencies it is easier to understand develop and test so the microservices should be easy to understand means when you build the code it should be very simple not not make it very complicated you can develop and test your application independently it should be simply testable speed ups the development that means the if you build the application using the microservices pattern it will increase the development speed and you can easily implement the continuous integration and uh, uh, deployment uh, for your application if you see the evolution of so software architecture so in initial days as i have mentioned we were using the monolithic applications monolithic application means we build the entire functionalities inside a single project as i have mentioned if i am building an e-commerce application we create the product services or means product functionality cart functionality identity functionality order functionality payment functionality 
everything we will create inside a single project which also provides the ui for that particular application for example if you are a .NET developer, you can consider uh, a .NET MVC project or maybe a web forms application. If you are a Java developer, you can consider a JSP or servlets or JSF applications where you will design the UI as well as the backend logic, business logic within a single project. Later, we have identified Creating monolithic applications makes the application more complicated and the dependencies between the uh, functionalities are more complicated. So we created the uh, service oriented architecture in which we can make the applications backend functionalities as independent services. And they communicate each other using a ESB. ESB means Enterprise Service Bus. That means every service needs to communicate with another service only th through a service bus, Enterprise Service Bus, which is a messaging platform, as you can say, or it takes care of security, messaging, transport, etc. So the front-end services can be created separately maybe a JavaScript framework or a desktop application, or it can be a mobile application. The front end is developed separately and that can consume the uh, backend services through the ESP. So any communication that happens inside the project is through the ESB, Enterprise Service Bus. But this is simplified now and the ESB concept is removed and some other uh, principles are added for microservices. In microservices, we create each service as independently deployable service and each service uses its own database which is not shared with other uh, microservices. And the services can communicate each other using some well-known protocols or standards. As I have mentioned, it can be HTTP or AMQP, that is messaging or event-driven architecture. Any, any, any mode of communication it can use to communicate with the uh, other service. But if you see, still our UI application is created as a single project. As you can see, in even in the microservices, we have the backend services, which is created as independently deployable uh, services, that is small services, which can be consumed from the UI. But the UI is a single project. It can be a mobile application, or it can be a uh, web application, or it can be a desktop application, but it is created as a single project. So web application, mostly the JavaScript web frameworks we use for building this UI layer. That is React you can use or Angular you can use or you can use any other JavaScript frameworks like Vue, Ember, Knockout, Solid or any, any JavaScript technology you can use to build the UI layer. But the entire UI functionality we create inside a single project. That is the current approach. But going forward, we need to modify the UI layer approach also. So considering the monolithic approach for the front end, because still the front end is developed as a monolithic application because the mono the front end application is consuming the product service, front-end application is consuming the order service, front-end application is consuming the payment service. That means the front-end is currently a single project, which we call as monolith front-end application. It has some disadvantages. First of all, it has some scaling issues, which means the it cannot 
add new features without modifying the existing front end code base suppose if i need to add a new feature or a new functionality to the ui it will be difficult for us to plug in that feature without modifying the existing code base so that means any changes you need to make inside your front end application maybe you need to add a uh, just you just need to add a new page or you just need to add a, a, a advertisement banner for that you have to go and modify your entire application second thing team scaling of team a single team works on a single framework they may not be able to develop the entire features for that particular application maybe uh, if I, a team who works on a react front end yes we know that react is a library it has its own limitations okay so if a, if the team is creating the uh, front end application using react they have to use only react related functionalities inside the application but if you see the, the other side angular or view or some other javascript frameworks they may offer some more features and functionalities which i cannot include here because my application is react either i have to recreate the entire application into angular or i have to stick only with the react functionality so i cannot scale my team and the technology that is what uh, the scaling limitation or scaling issue with the monolith front end application another problem that we that we can identify is communication issues so if you see the back end apis are developed by different teams because we if we are following the microservices approach as you can see the product api is developed by one team cart api is developed by another team order api is developed by another team payment gateway is developed by another team and all these apis are consumed by the ui application so the front end development team or front end application development team needs to communicate with multiple teams to understand about that particular service suppose if the front end application development team that means ui team needs to consume the product api they need to communicate with the product development team or product api development team if the front end application needs to use the cart api they have to communicate with the cart api development team so it that means the communication is more complex they have to the, that means the front end development team needs to communicate with multiple other teams to build the back end services another thing back end teams are not customer focused if you see the end users or end customers are always giving feedback about the front end okay we want to see this information in the ui we want to add this feature into the ui we want to do this functionality in our application we need to fetch this functionality and print inside the page that means the customer feedback is always coming to the front end development team not to the back end team so suppose if consider a scenario that the customer is saying okay we want to extract the products so and so informations and display that inside the ui this feedback goes to the front end team not to the back end team directly so this information need to be forwarded to the back end concerned back end technology team so that they can create an api or function to extract that product informations and the, then only the front end team can consume it so if the front end api team 
needs to consume this functionality or consume this API. They have to inform the backend technology or backend team to about this customer feedback. For example, if the customer is giving a feedback to the UI team, okay, you have to add a search text box in the top, which I can use to search for products. So the UI developer development team is getting the feedback from the customer. And when they try to implement the search functionality, they want to consume the search API from the backend. But unfortunately, the search API is not yet implemented by the backend team. So this front end team needs to forward this feedback to the backend team. That OK, our customer is asking for a search feature, so you have to create a search API in your uh, backend so that the front end application can consume the search functionality. That means there is no direct communication between the backend and the customer. Right. So that is another problem. So the backend development team is not aware about the customer feedback or a customer what the customer wants. Another thing is code and testing complexity. So if we are building the entire UI as a single project, which is consuming multiple backend APIs, because a single front end application is consuming all the backend services like a product API, cart API, order API, identity API. So every APIs are consumed from a single front end application. So it will be difficult for implementing the testing. And it will slow down the application delivery. So what is the solution for this? If I'm creating a monolith front end application, we have a lot of challenges. So how we can avoid these challenges or how we can uh, eliminate these challenges? The solution is micro front end. So micro front end is a pattern that we can use to uh, build the front end application using the same microservices uh, pattern. So the microservices pattern is used for the backend. The same pattern or same approach we can use for building the uh, front end technologies as well. So as, I, as we have discussed, microservices is an architectural style that structure the application as a collection of loosely coupled services. The same pattern we can implement for our front end. That means we can build the components of the UI front end application as independently deployable services or independently, independently deployable components which we can integrate together inside a single UI application. As you see, when we create the applications using micro frontends, what we typically do, the product API is built by the product development team. They can also develop the UI for it. That means, the product development team is going to do the entire end-to-end uh, -end development for the product service. That means they are not only going to build the product API, that is backend service, they also build the front-end. That means the product UI element. Similarly, the cart API is built by the cart development team. They create the cart UI also. That means one team is going to build the entire uh, functionality. That means the front end, back end and the business logic, everything will be developed by a single team. And then we can use these independent functionalities or independent UI components inside a host application or is I can we can we can call it as a shell application. A shell is nothing but 
is a container. So we have a container application which could be a simple HTML page. So inside the shell application, we can include all these uh, UI components, which means the team who is going to build this backend microservice, they can also build the front end UI component for that particular service. So what is the benefit? The functionality which needs to be used in the UI is completely aware because the same team is working on the front end and back end development. So what are the different features and functionalities uh, provided by the back end APIs is known to the front end development team because it's the same team who is going to work in the UI building. And they can create this independent components, maybe a product component or product application, cart application, order application, payment application, like that independent uh, UI elements we can make and that can be deployed inside a single shell application, which means it's a host application. So that pattern is called micro frontend. That means we are going to implement the uh, microservices approach to our uh, frontend applications as well. So how this is going to work? As you can see, we are going to create different independently deployable front-end services like the front-end A, front-end B, front-end C, which works with back-end A, back-end B, and back-end C. That means the front-end A is going to work with the back-end A, front-end B is going to work with back-end B, and front end C is going to work with back, uh, back end C. And we will be going to build and test this front end independently, which means we are not going to create all the UI elements or UI components inside a single project. Instead of that, we are going to create each component of this application independently. And then we can build and test them using independent uh, build and release pipelines. That means CI, CD pipelines. And we can deploy these front end applications independently on different uh, platforms or environments. Maybe the front end A, I can deploy into uh, a VM in Azure. The front end B, I can deploy into a VM in AWS VM or front end C, I can deploy into a VM which runs on uh, on premise uh, environment. Then using a shell application, which means a container application, or we can also call it as a host application. A host application is going to consume these independently deployed front ends inside that shell and they can communicate each other using the well-defined JavaScript communication standards. It could be the events or window objects. Uh, that means event listeners or window objects or document objects. So whatever is the appropriate communication pattern available, the they can use to communicate. They can be used to communicate the uh, front ends together. If you see, as you can see in the picture, we can build the header as an independent application, the search functionality as a separate application, and the product can be deployed as a independent application. That means 
the product listing is created as a separate UI application. So what are the advantages of following such a micro front-end architecture? First of all, independent versioning supported. That means, as we have explained for the backend services, independent versioning is supported for front-end as well. That means we have previously discussed the product API may be running version 1.5. Uh, order service may be using version 3.0. And the payment gateway service is may be using version 5.5. That means every API or every microservice uh, is following different versions or different versioning patterns. Similarly, here the front end can also have different versions. So the header app is not, not going to modify every time. So it may be version 2.0. Search functionality may be version 1.5. The product app functionality, which means the product listing, uh, product updation, all these UI, product related UI functionalities may be version 2.8. So that means every front end element is uh, using separate versions or they can be managed as separate applications. So separate versioning can be followed. They are independently deployable. As I have explained, you can deploy them in different environments, maybe in uh, suppose if you consider the Azure cloud, Inside the Azure, you can use app service or a container service or maybe a VM or some other kind of uh, deployment uh, service to deploy each one of this service. There we use a shell app. As you can see, all these three independent UI elements are combined inside a single UI element. That means it's a shell application that is hosting all the three UI elements. Each team can pick their own stack. So this is one of the feature that we have discussed for microservices as well, that your backend service can be developed in any technology stack. Similarly, we can build our front-end application or front-end UI elements using different technology stack. Maybe I can create the header component using uh, plain HTML and JavaScript. The search functionality I can implement using React. Product functionality I can implement using Angular like that. Different front-end technologies I can use to build a single UI application. But if you see, every technology has its own advantage as well as disadvantage. If you see the disadvantages of micro front ends is the complexity of implementing it. Because it is created and deployed as independent services, implementing the communication between those components will be a little complicated. So you need a better knowledge about the communication strategy or communication pattern that you need to follow inside this micro, micro front end. Because every component is independent, each other, if one component is emitting an event that needs to be consumed by another component. If one component wants to pass some data uh, into another component, you need to follow a particular standards that is offered by JavaScript, maybe a window object or some other kind of uh, listeners or a uh, external uh, storage service or something like that you have to follow to implement this communication. 
between the ui elements so for a beginner or a for a, for a person who is not very good in the front end development technology it will be little difficult to implement the micro front end pattern secondly i can say there is no specific standards defined for back end services we have different standards maybe we can implement it as a restful service or a soap web service or a grpc service or a something else so there are some standards defined for the back end services so each back end service we can create by following this particular standard maybe i can create every back end service as restful service or i can use a grpc service or i can use the uh, soap ui or sorry soap uh, services that means web services for building this back end that means there are some standard defined for the back end development but there is no such standards defined for micro front ends as of now so you can use your own approach for building it okay so there is no such guideline that your application needs to be created in such a way what is the appropriate or possible way to implement this you can do that there is no specific standards defined anywhere so this may cause some issues because when a team is going to build a micro front end application they follow a custom pattern which which may be designed and de developed by that particular team so when a new team start working on the project a new member joins into the project he may not be aware about that particular pattern that you follow for building this micro front end the design principles on team ownership as i have mentioned the end to end development is done by a single team that means each team is responsible for building the entire application module that means if a team works on the product api development the same team is also responsible to build the product ui component a team who works on the cart api the same team is responsible to build the cart ui element also it's not mandatory that you have to do in such a way you can implement a separate team for building the front end as well but again uh, the the communication problems may occur so it's better to use Uh, or it is better to build the front end and back end using a single team second is business domain that each team is focus on a particular business pattern or business solution that means product service is going to use only or it's they are going to build only the product related functionalities because each team works on a single component they do not go and uh, build a cross communication with other teams advantages of this because it enables better communication that means the qa and testing team or other stakeholders needs to communicate with only one team to understand a particular product or a service for example if the qa team or a testing team wants to know about the uh, payment service for front end testing they have to communicate with the front end team for back end api testing they have to communicate with the back end api team is not necessary now because now the front end and back end can be developed by a single team so the testing team needs to communicate with only 
one team to understand or to test the front end and back end of that particular service. So that means it enables better communication for uh, the stakeholders of this application. Better coordination between members in the team. That means the database front end and back end developers. So they choose the appropriate uh, language and framework. They build the database solution. So they build entirely a reusable element which can be plugged into anywhere. The technology, if you see, this is completely technology agnostic. As I have mentioned, you can choose a, any language or framework for building this reusable component, which means the header I can create using React. The uh, nav nav left navigation bar or sidebar component you can create using Vue.js or the main page can be uh, defined using Angular. Is it, It's possible, but the only thing is you have to ensure better communication or proper communication between this UI components. Independently replacement of frameworks. Suppose if you feel that a particular technology stack is not suitable or it uh, needs to be upgraded. You can do that very easily. For example, currently the main page of the application is developed using Angular 8.0. Suppose if the team is identifying that Angular is not good for rendering the main page, it's better to use uh, React or Vue.js or some other frameworks. Yes, without affecting the other modules of the application, we can easily replace the technology stack. That means the main page component can be now developed using React. For that, you don't need to make any changes in your header component or sidebar component. And also, suppose if we feel that, okay, currently we are using Angular 8 and we want to upgrade to the latest Angular, maybe Angular 13 or 14. Yes, you can easily do that without disturbing the other modules of the application. Selecting the correct framework. That is another point, which means Every front end framework and library is not going to offer similar features and functionalities. There are some features which is offered by Angular is not provided by React. There are some features which is provided by React may not be available in Angular or Vue.js. So what we need to do we have to identify the appropriate technology stack or appropriate framework for building that element. Maybe for creating the main page, Angular can be the suitable one. So you can choose that. For building the navigation page, you can say React can be the better one. So you can use React for that. Motivates the team by giving the freedom to choose a technology. So it also helps the team to build a better UI components because assume that the uh, product API development team, they are already aware about Angular so that the members in the product API development team, so they are aware about Angular. But if the team is forced, to do the development in React, they will not be happy because they are aware about Angular. And if the organization is saying, okay, you have to build this front end using React, then only it will, it will work in our application. Then it will be difficult for them to learn React and then build the application. Because even though the team is already aware about Angular, they have to go and learn a new technology. But if you use 
micro front end pattern you get your team can create a reusable ui component which you can plug with any other uh, component developed in any other framework maybe the react component and the angular component can work together seamlessly without any issue or the angular component and the view component can work together without any issue okay so the team will be happy because they can use the framework they are already aware to build this front end but if you consider the technology that we are going to use is either a react view or angular or maybe a combination of this so there are some challenges first of all global variables so in javascript we can declare and use global variables which is visible to out visible to all the entire application it will be visible so what will happen if multiple components of our application uses global variables with same name for example i have a global variable with the name x in react i have a global variable with x and in angular i have a global variable with the name x there can be a chance of uh, uh, what uh, conflict in the usage because two components uses the same global variable that there there will be a conflict and the uh, application may uh, throw an exception or maybe application may crash because of that library conflict maybe the react component is going to use a jquery version 1. maybe sorry 3.1 and angular is going to use a jquery version 3.5 so look at that there there are two different components they use the same dependency but they are using two different versions which means inside your application there they will be using different uh, dependency libraries the same dependency libraries but they they may be different uh, versions so version conflicts can come while using some libraries now it's time to implement this micro front end because we have discussed about what is micro service what is micro front end and how we can build the micro front end what is the pattern what are the advantages and disadvantages what are the challenges that we may we may face while building this micro front end now let's understand what are the steps involved in the process of building a micro front end first of all we need to do an audit for mfe because whether your application is suitable for creating in mfe format suppose if it is a very simple website why to go for a complexity because i already said complexity is a disadvantage of micro front end because there they, you need to go and implement different communication patterns or communication approaches uh, for micro front end so if the application does not require a micro front end uh, approach then you don't need to go for that so you need to do an audit whether the application requires maybe when the application which you are going to develop or the existing application when you migrate they actually require the uh, micro front end pattern or not suppose if you have identified yes we can build our application into a micro front end pattern then we can build the requirements identify the different components of your application like inside your application you have a header component identify which technology i have to use for that we have a search bar component 
identify which component or which language or framework I can use for that. We have a product service or product UI or cart UI. Which technologies framework I can use for that? So it's next to identify the requirements. What are the things I have to uh, uh, componentify? Means we, what are the things I have to build as a micro micro front end? And what, which of the technologies uh, stacks I have to use? Then it's time to build this MFE. Maybe some of the things are already available as uh, reusable things or as a ready to use products. So you can integrate them by purchasing those means you can buy or build your own micro front ends. You can uh, build your own micro front end components or you can buy some of the existing micro front end uh, components or re elements and integrate inside your application. So how you implement this micro front ends? As I have mentioned earlier, there is no proper standards defined so far. So it's your wish. You can either use an external app bootstrapping technology means you can deploy your uh, independent applications in different environments and using the URLs, you can integrate them and using the uh, window object and the event listeners, you can exchange the data between them. So that is very simple uh, approach that is external app bootstrapping. Another approach which is available is iframe which means the iframe tag can be used to include the components, reusable components within your application. Another thing is you can use any micro front end framework which is available in the market. So there are a uh, couple of uh, new micro front end frameworks available. I'll show you the list of micro front ends frameworks currently available and we can choose any one of them. First of all, the external app bootstrapping. What is mean by this external app bootstrapping? So inside this external app bootstrapping, we deploy our application code in different servers, which means if I have a header component which will be deployed in one server, the search component can be deployed in another server. The cart service can be deployed in one server like that. We, our application lives in different uh, servers. And we deploy them independently because they follow different versioning. They uh, are independent projects, so we can do the deployment independently. And this communication the components will be communicating each other using the window object and even bus so the inside the shell application we will have the uh, window object so one component can emit the event through the window object which can be consumed by the other component so that way it is going to uh, communicate. So I'll show you a demo of this uh, a simple application which uses an external app bootstrapping. Another thing is iframes. So iframe is also so somewhat similar to the external app bootstrapping where the code is uh, deployed in different servers for each component and the communication is done through the browser because we are integrating them uh, using an iframe tag. As you can see here, the line number 25, we can see we are including uh, an HTML page inside this application. So we can say this is an external application which we are including inside this application. And this is an older approach which we 
uh, used in older days also for uh, integrating external websites inside or external pages inside our application. So that is not a recommended approach, but still this is also an option for us. Another approach is micro uh, micro uh, front end framework, sorry, micro not micro services, micro front end frameworks, uh, which uh, we can use like a single SPA, which is a micro front end framework. As you can see, this is the home page of single spa.js.org uh, where you can see this is a JavaScript router for front end micro services, means this is used for. Uh, micro front end application development. Now we have another one, Lugi, which is also a framework for micro front end application. You can see it is enterprise ready micro front end framework. Another one is Webpack 5 module federation. So Web, Webpack is a familiar tool for all the front end developers because it's it is one of the most commonly used packaging tool for uh, front end applications. We uh, build our Angular or React applications using Webpack. We bundle the uh, uh, files using the Webpack. So the Webpack 5 version provides a module federation which can be used for uh, building micro front ends. Even though it is not a fully qualified uh, micro front end framework. So this feature, it's a feature of uh, Webpack 5, which I, which we can use for uh, uh, building the micro front end. You can see, so uh, module federations definition they have given in the site itself. Multiple separate builds should form a single application. These separate builds should not have dependencies between each other. That means they are independent components or services. They can be developed and deployed individually. This is often known as micro front end, but is not limited to that. That means you can use this feature to uh, build independently deployable uh, UI elements. Pyral you can use that is also a uh, micro front end uh, framework or library which you can use. We also have open components which is also a micro front end uh, library that you can use for building it. And we have also print JS which is another micro front end uh, framework in JavaScript. So you can use any one of this. So, so far uh, these uh, micro front end frameworks are uh, in the emerging stage. That means uh, organizations are now start adopting these technologies. It's uh, maybe in the coming uh, years, this technologies or these frameworks becomes very popular and you can build your uh, front ends using this micro front end uh, frameworks. So a couple of points uh, to remember before uh, winding up. Do we do not use this micro front end if you have a simple application. I have already explained that if you have a very simple application, do not make it very complicated uh, by converting it into a micro front end based application. Use micro front end to make things easier, not complicated. Micro front end architecture does not mean to use every framework in the world. That means, okay, you may be thinking that, okay, I'm going to use micro front end. I can use different uh, JavaScript frameworks within a single application, means a header can be in React, footer can be in uh, uh, Angular, uh, uh, I can use Vue.js for a uh, search component like that. But don't think that all the frameworks you have to use. 
not necessary. Maybe you can build your application using a single framework itself, but all these components can be deployed uh, independently. Means header, footer, sidebar, main components, everything can be created in React, but they will be independent React components or independent React projects. Okay, so it's not necessary that you have to use different frameworks and all the JavaScript frameworks you have to use, not necessary. Maybe uh, same framework can be used for multiple uh, components or multiple uh, modules uh, in, inside your application. Don't forget to make standards across micro apps. So even though there are uh, no defined standards, it's better to follow some patterns and practices for creating the micro frontends so that others will be able to follow the thing because in a team and when you work in a team when you when somebody uh, joins the team for them it will be easy to follow this pattern so it it, it should be properly documented and the pattern should be uh, easy to adopt for others so that things you have to uh, remember while building this micro frontend applications now let's see a demo. So what is micro frontend in action? A very simple demo I want to show. So here I have two components and a shell application. So here if you see, I have a product catalog application which is a very simple JavaScript application. I'm not using any specific frameworks. Yes, I can go and use some uh, well-known frameworks like Angular or React or Vue.js or Ember. But since you all are coming from different languages or frameworks background, I'm using a very simple JavaScript uh, code to build this application. As you can see, I have this products component. This is the products component class, which extend the HTML element, which means this is an HTML tag or HTML element. I can render this component as an HTML element. Okay, so products component can be rendered as an HTML element because it is inheriting from the HTML element. So here is the constructor of this particular class where I'm storing some product sample data. As you can see, I have the items collection where I'm storing some products data. As you can see, these are some sample data I'm storing inside it. Okay. So this sample data I want to display inside this uh, application. So I have a function, as you can see, here I have a function called create view. Create view means whenever I use this products component, it needs to generate a UI. Okay, so what is this UI? Creates view. It's a custom function. So what is this function returns? This function returns an HTML UI element where it is going to display all the products which is there in the items collection. So here items collection is storing four products information these four products information i want to display below in this view here what i have done i have hard coded the list of items instead of that i can load this products data from a database or api so using i can create a microservices api that is products api which can return the list of products and that list of products i can store here so here i'm not using any backend service so i simply hard coded four items inside this items array that four items i want to display using a loop as you can see here we are creating the products card or products uh, view here 
and that is returned here. So we are adding a button to the uh, items which is used for adding to the cart. So whenever, whenever the user is going to click on this button, so this button's ID is products uh, component button. So whenever we clicks on this button, the item needs to be added to the cart. And here also you can see we have the image because this is going to display the image of this product, the product name and the product price. And here we have a checkbox. So what is the checkbox name products and value is product uh, ID. So here we have a checkbox and here I have a button. Now we have to attach the event for this buttons and checkbox. So here you can see inside this constructor here you can see I am attaching one change event for the checkboxes because if the item is currently selected I have to deselect. If the item is not selected I have to deselect. So and also I have to make sure that the items at least one item is selected because if I want to click on the add to cart button I have at least one item selected. So here I am declaring a variable that is at least one selected. Currently it is false. If at least one checkbox is selected, then we are converting that variable into true. Okay. Here we have the click event of this button. And if the button is submit button, we are adding this. We are adding this uh, products information to the card. We are adding this products information to the card. So for that, we are using this click event where you can see it's going to check each one of this checkbox. And if this checkbox is selected, then that current product value or current products information we are adding to the selected items array. So here selected items is an array. The items we are adding into this and then we are dispatching an event. As you can see, whenever I click on the button, we are dispatching a custom event the name of the custom event is selected items and we are passing a data here. So what is the data? The key is detail and the products list. We have, what are the items we have selected? That selected items we are passing here. So this is the name of the event and the uh, list of items which is selected. We are passing or we are emitting this event. That is what dispatch event. So this is what done by the product component. Now I have another project which is cart project. Here I have a component which is cart component. OK, so this is also inherited from the HTML element. Here it is very simple because the in constructor we are attaching a cart loaded event which is going to create the which is going to call the view with that particular data the data which is received by the cart loaded event we are going to pass to the create view method what is this create view method here it is going to it is going to generate the ui element that is the products information will be shown in the cart as a table you can see OK, so each one of the product I want to display. So the detail contains the products items or product details. That information we are passing to the show cart items function, which will generate the table row. So each one of the product item will be printed inside this. So this is the means both the classes, whether it is a product component class, we are exporting it as a component means the HTML component element. So what is the tag custom tag for that? 
products component is a tag which is a custom element so we are defining a custom tag or custom element the name of the tag is products component and that is exporting or that is using the products component class similarly the uh, cart component is a custom tag which is use which is going to use the cart component class so i have two components which is uh, uh, which can be used inside the shell application so here spa is a shell application as you can see this is a simple html page inside the html's body i have the navigation bar and below you can see i have a model dialog which is used for showing the cart information as you can see inside the model dialog i am calling this cart component so you can you can see here cart hyphen comp that is a cart component custom tag as you can see this is a cart component custom tag which i am using inside this but for using this i need to import the javascript file as you can see here i am using these two web components that is a reusable component this is my cart component js which is coming from the first project this is uh, product component js which is coming from another project okay so here if you see i have this cart component here in the model dialog and below i have this main page which is showing the products information so inside this container i am calling this products component here this products component is going to display the products list okay so let me run these three applications so locally first i am going to run so i'll run this first application here i have this for testing i have this created this html pages so first i will run this products catalog application let's locally run this as you can see this is only the products components page you can see this is the product component so there i have four products and check boxes and i have a button there is no navigation bar no cart information nothing so this is running from the ui that is 127.0.0.1 colon 5500 slash product catalog and in this is my index.html for the product catalog application the second one is cart application for testing this i have this one so there is no items in the cart so this is running successfully but since there are no items in the cart it's just simply say the no items in the cart but now i want to run my spa so inside the spa i am going to use that two components so let's let me go and run this here you can see in the top i have this black navigation bar in the top right side i have the view cart because currently there is no items in the cart so it's empty but if i select one or two items and say add it to cart you can see the cart component or cart items are added here when i click on this button it shows this cart component this is what the cart component which shows the information in the table format and you can see this is what the information so now if i update this here i can see the data is also updated in the corresponding way so now locally this is executed suppose if i want to independently make changes inside the application without affecting the other one suppose i have this uh, product catalog service where i have this products information in the table format so here you can see we are displaying the price of the products using the rupee symbol so what i'm going to do i'll just make this change here currently in the ui you can see the rupee symbol is there so i'm just going to update this using euro 
and save it. So this is this application is currently running on port number 5500. So it's automatically update here in the shell application also. Okay, it's updating in the child application that is component application as well as in the shell application. Okay, so now this is what the local testing, but if I want to deploy in a cloud or somewhere and test it, so I can go to my cloud service. So here I have my Azure account. And I have deployed this applications as independent services. So here you can see I have an MFE cart service, MFE products catalog service, and there is a shell application which is MFE eShop. So if you see MFE product catalog, which I browse, I can see the same products information. So this is what the information you can see this is running from one website. So this is completely a different website. Now, if I go to the cart project, so this is my cart project, and this is running from a different domain. You can see this domain is MFE product catalog dot Azure website dot net, and this is MFE product cart dot Azure website dot net. Means these are two different websites. This is cart website and this is catalog product catalog website. Now I can consume this from the shell application, which is this one. So here, this is the shell application. So I can just update this. Here you can see. Okay. So if you have a doubt that whether these are actually coming from two different applications, I can do the shell application testing from using these two services. As you know, these two are two different applications. So I just copy the URL of this okay, and put into my shell applications. Here I can say instead of this, I'm going to use this URL. That means this cart component.js is coming from this website. And uh, this product catalog information is coming from a different website. So look at that. Which means my product component is coming from a different website and cart component is coming from a different website. So now let me run this. As you can see, now it works as expected. Now, if you confuse that I am still using the local one, don't worry. I have this is the local one. This file is the local one. Here still the price is euro. But in our, out, our output application, you can see it is rupees, which means this is coming from my uh, cloud based deployment service. OK, so here I can add this and it still works. So my shell application is running locally, but I am using the components which is deployed in cloud. As you can see, okay, these are the two different applications. So the product component is a different application. Cart is a different application. Now, if I want to make changes, I can make changes in this particular uh, application and deploy it to the same server. Suppose if I make changes, the euro I change to maybe uh, dollar that is USD and save it. And if I want to deploy this to cloud, so I can say go to Azure and I'm going to deploy this. I don't have an app service. Okay, let me.
Yeah, I have the absolutes. there is something wrong happened. Let me close and reopen. Logicap is clashing with this. But I think there is some issue in the login. Fine, I have app service. Okay, this is the product cart where I am going to deploy it to web app. So which folder I want to publish, I'll select this folder, product card, select. Okay. It's deploying this updated one that is with the USD. So locally when I currently test, you can see it is still showing the uh, rupees. After I publish the change, let's see what is going to display okay, let me confirm whether it is or oh, this is the product cart i have published
a product cart is fine for you this is what i have to put browse website okay this is still the old one this is i have to deploy product catalog and cart i want to publish This change is not reflected. This is not yet updated, I think. Let me just confirm whether the deployment is done correctly or not. We go to console. Okay, it's USD only. And Okay, here it is USD updated. This is the URL we have used inside our application. Right? Uh, Okay. 
this is the new file when why the ui is not updated it's saying somewhere it is caching i think yeah it's usd only let's try with a different browser yes i think it's problem of caching only here you can see it is still rupees but when i tested in a different browser it's updated so you can see i have make i have made changes in only in the product component and it is now updated to the latest one and this functionality still works here so it's not a problem so okay this card component is not published correctly i think so i need to republish this cart component Okay, so it's done. Now I'll refresh. Yes, it's working fine. So, so this is how the micro front ends works. As you can see, we have different application. This is the shell application, and this is the product cart, which is one micro front end, and this is the catalog, which is another micro front end. So these applications are independent deployed, independently deployed, and that URL I can use inside my main application, which is the shell application. And that's how it works in a single micro frontend application. So this, this is a very simple demo. I have new, not used any specific frameworks like a, a React or Angular. This is a very generic JavaScript. Uh, which uses the external app bootstrapping method because I have not used any uh, micro front end frameworks inside this. It's a very pure JavaScript code uh, for creating the web components and then using that web components to uh, work together inside a single application. So that's it uh, from my side. I hope you are, uh, 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 you got an idea about what is micro front end and how we can build a micro front ends. And I have demonstrated a simple uh, example of uh, how the micro, micro front end applications can be deployed. So now if you have any questions, you can post your questions in the chat.